On the Lollygaggers podcast, we believe that recordings, like fine wine, get better with age. Which is why this episode is a few weeks late, so our bad. Now on this episode, Jeff waxes rhapsodic about the thing, infection in Outpost 31, while Justin experiments with werewolves in escape room in a box. In a surprising twist, both Lollygaggers face the same challenge. Watch Netflix's newest supernatural drama, The Order. Welcome to episode number 48 of the Lollygaggers podcast, a show about all sorts of different things, from comics to games, movies to TV. I am on your host, Jeff. I'm the other one, Justin. How's it going, buddy? Oh, it's going. It's uh, it's going. Stressful week for both of us. A lot of, uh, a lot of important, serious life things going on. I got the last week of my 10-year process happening so i gotta get all that paperwork in this week and you have a, a new uh new job interview yeah 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 yeah. yeah. there's some stuff going on some stuff in the works so uh we'll see how it goes i'm sure it'll end up horribly just like uh, how the browns got obj i'm sure it's gonna end up horrible too they're gonna be like the lakers of football next year pretty much where it's like oh they got these great players and they're not gonna go anywhere that's my thought that's yeah that's a brown the, fan. the jets got Le'Veon bell so i'm assuming he's gonna like totally rip up an ACL or something during uh, during preseason. I'm, I'm guessing that's going to happen. All right, Justin. So even though it's been a busy uh, week or so, I have been on spring break. I've been doing a lot of work uh, during spring break. But uh, I also got in a game night. So we had a, a big game <laughs> night for the first time in a while. We haven't had one for a while, to be honest. Usually our game nights are smaller. So we have like our, my RPG group. There's six of us where we just play, you know, Dungeons and Dragons or Starfinder or whatever. And uh, my wife and I play games, and then I usually have my Kingdom Death Monster Nights, which is just four of us. But we actually had like a big one with like eight or nine people, uh, because our old friend Derek, uh, he uh, he shot me a text and he wanted to put a game night together because it's been a while. And uh, yeah, so we put it together last weekend. We got a, a bunch of different games in, so I'm really only going to talk about one because there's one that you are familiar with, uh, and it was such an epic and interesting story that I want to talk about it now. So. Uh, I feel like talking about my favorite movie, which also I have three different game versions of this movie. It's called The Thing, mm -hmm, Infection mm -hmm. at Outpost 31, which you are you are uh, uh, very familiar with. Uh, this game itself came out in 2017, and it's designed by Joe Van, Van Wettering, uh, and it's published by Mondo Games and Project Rega. Now, if you've seen the movie The Thing, the 1982 John Carpenter, Kurt Russell-led movie, uh, then you know exactly what I'm talking about, because that's what this game is actually based off of. This is a game that's a high-player count game. Uh, I wouldn't call it a party game, but uh, it's definitely... Uh, a game that doesn't have a great deal of heavy or complex rules, uh, so you, it's certainly accessible. Uh, it definitely helps if you know the thing, and it also helps to do like what I did, which is to play the soundtrack uh, of the thing in various creepy sounds uh, in the background we were playing that help kind of uh, uh, increase our, our various mood. Uh, but this plays for this plays four to eight. Uh, we actually played it with seven because uh, it was. Later in the night, after a couple of people had to leave, and so we had seven people, and we busted this out. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the premise of the movie The Thing, or uh, the, the game itself uses that same premise, uh, we are in Antarctica. Uh, and it is, uh, I guess, the early 80s or so. We are at U.S. Outpost 31, um, which is essentially a group of scientists, uh, some mechanic people, uh, helicopter pilots, stuff like that. And they're all just kind of trapped in the middle of a, uh, you know, an isolated area. Uh, they don't have easy access, obviously, to the outside world. And they come across a very hostile extraterrestrial life form is the phrase that they use because it's the thing. And if you don't know the thing, the thing is essentially a, 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 a shape-shifting alien that can take over um, the look of a person. So it can actually become them. Everyone plays a different uh, a different character from the movie, uh, and I was playing Windows, uh, who's the op who's the radio operator who uh, freaks out so badly uh, during the movie that he just stands there in shock while he gets uh, destroyed by the thing. But that's not what happened in this game. So I played uh, I played Windows. I really wanted to play Kurt Russell, obviously, because I love Kurt Russell. But Windows actually kind of looks like a poor man's Kurt Russell, so I picked him. To me, there's only one character, and that's Wilford Brimley. Well, so. I don't know, man, because there's Wilford Brimley, who's awesome, even though he goes crazy as Blair. Uh, spoiler alert. 
Uh, Kurt Russell is Kurt Russell, so he's awesome. Uh, but then, uh, then there's Childs, man. There's Childs. Childs is pretty badass. So, in the game itself, it like I said, it's it's a high player count game. What you're trying to do is you're trying to complete various tasks. There's kind of like a three acts to this game, um, and the board is a, a kind of an overhead. Uh, overhead view of the entirety of the the outpost and the, all the different rooms. Um, it's sort of, sort of like a very generic blueprint. It's got some nice art, actually. It's very simple. It's very easy to understand things. It's, um, it has various uh, various pictures of like the different equipment, like the helicopter and uh, like some of the other uh, other like areas that you would recognize from different scenes in the movie itself. Um, the Outpost itself, the blueprint is broken up kind of into three separate sections. There's section one, section two, and section three, and each one of those has six separate rooms assigned to that section. And the reason it's broke up this way is because that's, that's, you can only go to like, you can only go to those areas of the outpost if you've completed the objectives of the previous section. So, for instance, we have to complete a series of missions in section one of the outpost before we're able to gain access to section two. Then we have to complete a series of objectives in, in, out, in section two before we're able to move on to section three. Now, the objectives themselves, what, what happens is that each person, we just sort of rotate first player around. We call it El Capitan, or just the captain. And the, the first player token is like a cardboard cut out of a gun, which is pretty hilarious. Um, and it's in reference to uh, to Gary's gun. Gary is, is like El Capitan uh, in the thing. And so that's your first player token. And so if you're the captain, what you do is you draw an objective card, or a mission card, I should say. Now, these mission cards can sometimes be instant events. So an instant event could be something like a fire breaks out in a particular room or smoke is starting to come from a particular room or the power goes out in a particular room. But more often than not, the and far more often than not, these mission cards actually describe a specific mission. And now this mission uh, requires a handful of people from the group to actually go to a location and you can kind of pick whatever location you want and complete a task. And there's some flavor text on these mission cards that usually correspond to certain lines and certain moments from the movie. And so again, if you know the movie, it makes it even better. Now, the mission card itself will tell you exactly how many players have to go on this mission. Uh, and, and it scales depending upon how many people are playing. Uh, and then not only will it, will it tell you how many people need to go, but it'll also tell you which type of people. Because every character is broken into kind of one of three different roles. Either you're a scientist, uh, you work for ops, uh, or you're like, um, I can't remember the third exactly. I think it's just like mechanical or something like that. Uh, but those are like your three categories. There's a uh, green, there's yellow, and there's blue. And that's sort of like the three different categories. Every one of the characters that you can play falls into one of those categories. Now, the mission objective card will tell you whether or not specific roles are required. And so in some cases, maybe it's like, Five people need to go on this mission, two of whom need to be scientists. The other three can be whoever you want. Now, it's the captain's job then to pick who should go on this particular mission. And you would think, well, well, that's not hard. Just randomly pick whatever. Well, the problem is, is that in this game, much like the movie, not everyone is a human. So everybody in the very start of the game gets an affection card. And so they look at that card and it secretly tells them whether they are a human or whether they are infected, whether they are quite literally the thing. And if you are the thing, your job is to try to either uh, sabotage the players so badly that they fail to achieve the various objectives they have to make in this game, or you need to very sneakily get to the very end, earning the trust of the players so that you can then hop on a helicopter as the thing and escape with the players infecting the rest of the world. So if you're going on a mission, if you're the captain, you don't want to pick people who could potentially screw you up. Now, unless you yourself are a thing as well. Now, over the course of the game, more people can become infected because every time you complete one section, like when you go from section one to section two, or you go from section two to section three, we start dealing out more infection cards and the possibility uh, of, of more, more people gaining the thing condition increases. Uh, and so by the end of the game, even though the, the start of the game we played, we had one person who was infected, by the end, we actually had three. So as the captain, you pick who goes. And so you pick your group. And sometimes, you know, you're picking people who you suspect to be the thing. Sometimes you're picking people who you trust. And it's really hard to tell because 
it's really not a whole lot to go on. You just have to kind of read people like maybe you would in poker, but you also can potentially start tracking the way they contribute to these missions. Because when you go on a mission, every person on that mission has to contribute an actual uh, item card. Because uh, the mission itself will tell you what kind of, what do you have to achieve? And so usually this achievement has something to do with the type of cards that you, su you, you supply. So um, since on a mission, every single person has that, that's, that was selected by the captain has to contribute a card, usually the mission the at mission's goals will have something to do with the specific cards that are being supplied so it could be something like uh collect you know collect the cards turn over two random cards and if one of them is a petri dish then you win the mission or uh, in some cases you have to roll it's like okay it, you know roll if, if the amount of cards have you know this amount of dice value because a lot of the cards actually have a dice value as well then you pass and so the idea is that you're contributing cards if you're a human that are going to make it easier for you to complete that mission and if you are a thing you might instead submit sabotage cards okay because the cards when they're submitted to the captain are submitted secretly the captain has to shuffle them up because they so they don't know exactly who who submitted what and then they have to look at them and if there's a sabotage card uh, which are these big old red cards, something bad's going to happen. And it usually requires the captain to sacrifice something before they can potentially, you know, complete the mission. And more often than not, the mission is then failed. If you fail too many missions, you lose the game, basically. Bad things begin to happen. There's a tracker that starts to move along the way, so you really don't want to lose your missions. Now, periodically, whenever you go to these different rooms, after you've completed a mission, each of these rooms has a little tiny hidden token because you don't know what's actually in there because you're going into a room to explore it. Sometimes these tokens have items like rope or a flamethrower uh, or dynamite, and sometimes they have another thing. And if they ha So if you flip, once you actually complete the mission successfully, you flip that token over and it tells you specifically what's there. And it's either going to be an item or it's going to be a thing. And if it says thing, then you have to actually battle the thing, which means all of the people who were chosen to go on that mission into that specific room now have to engage in a battle. And just like trying to complete a mission, that requires everyone on the mission to supply a card to the captain. And then the captain shuffles them up, looks at them, and sees how many dice those cards have value for. So for instance, if you, if you submit like a shotgun as on your card, it probably has a plus three dice value. If you submit a knife, it has a plus one dice value. If you submit a Petri dish, it has a plus zero dice value. And so what the captain then does is that they add up all of the dice, all of the dice value of all the cards that were submitted, and they roll that amount of dice. And then that's, and, and the captain's rolling to kind of fight that thing. And this is where it kind of becomes Yahtzee. Uh, and usually in order to defeat the thing, depending upon how far along you are in the game, you need to get like three of a kind, right? And so you can roll like six dice, max is the maximum amount of dice you can roll and you were like six dice and you have three rolls of those six dice to get three of a kind and if you can do that you beat the thing and then it gets harder so the next time around it might be you know three three rolls to get four of a kind and maybe the next time around is a little bit harder so it gets a little bit harder each time as you move along in the game but the goal is again you submit cards with a high dice value if you're the human. If you're a thing, if you're secretly a thing, maybe you submit low dice value cards. Maybe you submit more sabotage cards. It really all depends. So if you're trying to play it slow, maybe you don't want to make it too obvious that you're the you're the bad guy because every mission that you go on has, fa has failed, so then people think you're the thing. Or maybe every time you get in a battle, there's a sabotage card. So you have to be really careful with this hidden role, uh, hidden trader game. Uh, now, over the course of the game, if, if the humans are able to complete each one of the sections, collect those objectives, and then they get to the very, very end of the game, then we get to the fun part. It's the helicopter round. So if they've gone through section, section one of the outpost, got the items and killed the things that they needed to, made it through section two of the outpost, again, collecting the items and killing the thing like they need to, and then go through section three doing the same thing, they get to do the helicopter phase. And at this point, the... It gets a little weird, but what happens is a person is nominated as the final captain, and in this case I was, uh, and then you get that final captain has to choose who goes on the helicopter. And the, the amount of people in the helicopter is proportionate to the amount of people in game. And if anybody gets on the helicopter, that is a thing, that is secretly a thing, then the thing wins. All the, 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 the Anyone who is a thing at that point wins. And if only humans get on the helicopter, then the humans win. Now, up until this point, we've played this game maybe a dozen times. 
uh, and we had never had a human <laughs> human victory. Uh, it's incredibly fun, but I was starting to wonder whether or not it was impossible. However, this time around, the a miraculous thing happened, Justin. The humans won. Uh, it was quite it's quite wonderful. Uh, and it was it was a really intense final uh, final helicopter round where I was chosen as the final captain, and much like I do, I grandstanded, uh, and uh, I started pointing the gun at everybody, and I started freaking out because I'm Windows, and I was human the whole time around. I was human, and I always like playing like the thing because I like I like playing like the the traitor or whatever because I like lying, uh, but I was the human, and so I was really trying very hard to figure out exactly who who the things were. And going into that final round, when I was selected as the final captain, like there were like two people I were gonna, I was gonna bring. I was gonna bring our friend Long Lee. I was gonna bring my wife Melissa, and then both of them ended up being things. Now, fortunately, we had done such a good job with our objectives throughout that we actually had blood tests at the end of the game. Now, blood tests allows you to actually test the blood, uh, not literally, of another player which causes them to actually reveal their hidden role card. So it shows whether they're infected or not. And so the first person I tested was my wife because that makes sense. Uh, and uh, she's super quiet and you never, it's, she's hard to read and she was a thing. And then the second person I tested with this, per, it was a new person at the game night, a friend of Derek, so I didn't really know. And I assumed it was a thing because he and I were at each other's throat a couple of times. We, we, the two of us and Long Lee went on a mission once and it failed. And I'm like, wait a second, how did this fail? So one of them, is you know a thing but long lee was like doing all sorts of really good things so it looked like he was just being really good so i assumed it was this new guy well it turns out that the new guy was also a human and it was long lee that was a thing and then we had like a good 15 minute discussion on trying to figure out whether i was going to leave our new you know our, our old friend derek behind or our our uh our life partner gate behind like one of the two of them always always kill derek and that's exactly what we did like i i didn't want to because like derek was on missions the whole time and every every time i brought him on a mission with me we succeeded and like gabe totally turned his back on me earlier in the game but as i like i i got i, I got like the new guy chris he got uh he got on the helicopter and then jasmine who's derek's girlfriend she got on the helicopter and then you looked at his dimples and you're like you know what? i just looked at him Gabe, come on and i was just like there's no way there's no and actually i'm still gonna bring him but i decided to do a democracy vote thing because you know even though i'm a captain i'm not a tyrant right even though i'm the only one with a gun i'm not crazy and so the other two people in the helicopter both voted um for gabe to go on the helicopter and i voted for derek and so since it was two to one i brought gabe and we ended up winning so for the first time ever humans won in the baker house that's an accomplishment it was very exciting and yeah it was pretty awesome i definitely uh recommend it uh again it's been out since 2017 mondo games uh, mondo tees if you ever heard of them um they they helped uh, to publish this with with project raygun uh and if you ever get a chance to play it definitely give it a try so the thing Infection and Outpost 31. Well, I have something very similar. I played a board game with my wife. It's called Escape Room in a Box. It's uh, published by Mattel. And uh, it's uh, Stay at Home Werewolves is, I guess, partnered with them. But uh, the one we played in particular is the Werewolf Experiment. So this uh, game can do two to eight players. And I was looking for something for two players. I played it with my wife. And I like these Escape Room games a lot. They're kind of like... I'd say if I were to pick a board game genre that i'm most I, I enjoy most to do like my wife because they're fully cooperative and it, it requires you guys to like to work together. i like that i don't like being competitive with my wife i like to work with her and this stuff yeah and um it was a little disappointing uh though it is a fully competent game and um had a lot of cool little riddles in it the it was $25 and the $15 one-off uh, escape room, like uh, uh, ones that we did before, those little tiny box ones we did before, were far more entertaining and more challenging. Um, this wasn't very challenging at all. The hardest thing was it in it for me was a crossword puzzle, because I'm not good at crossword puzzles, and that's really about it. Everything else is pretty pretty intuitive. Not a New York Times Sunday morning crossword not, puzzle. Not, uh, maybe if it's a word search. I'm a word search guy, you know? Um, okay. What about Sudoku? You like Sudoku? Uh, numbers numbers, numbers are hard. Uh, so, you know. You're a math teacher. The what? numbers are still hard. Anyways, so uh, we we played it and it said like you got to be, it, it can be done in about an hour. We got it done in about an hour and nine minutes. Um, and a little bit of that time my wife was on the phone with her mother. So like it was a uh, it was kind of like uh, skewed numbers, but overall, the idea of the of the game is 
you get a nice big box you open up the box and the idea is you have been infected by a werewolf uh serum and the only way that you can get out of the becoming a werewolf is to get this uh the antidote out of the last little uh um I guess container that they have locked up and so they have three little containers with uh, padlocks on them they're all plastic the padlocks are plastic too all these little things there's a syringe with stuff inside of it there's all these different things there's a crossword there's a word search there's a uh not color by numbers where you have to like connect the the dots with uh an order i forget what that's called just like a draw the picture type of thing um it seemed a little bit more elementary than the other ones that we have. But because of my, I think part of it is because of my exposure to the harder ones in the past, this just seems so much easier because of it. Those ones, the... Yeah, you're just, you're, you're way too swole. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Right now. The swole's the yeah. goal, size is prize. And uh, I've done that with uh, what I've done in these games before. So I'm what you call an uh, expert uh, uh, master. Uh, that's what we call ourselves in the escape room uh, community on the forums and stuff. But uh, what I found is that this game just was pretty simple. Like there was, you know, I found myself looking on at parts of the box that no one usually looks at because of the things I've done before with the old stuff, which still makes it fun. Um, there's cool little uh, twists of things that happen. There's like a little uh, UV light that helps you find hidden hidden words and stuff. But um. And like the, when you're doing the stuff, you can kind of like it creates like um, uh, a collage of pictures and stuff, kind of telling the story of what happened, and it's pretty cool. And there's nine parts to it, nine little uh, puzzles that you have to solve, and we solve all nine puzzles. It helps you get towards the final box. The final box has three numbers that you have to figure out through using all nine of the uh, of of the puzzles you solve, and kind of gets you to the center of the box. And in the end, you get the piece of paper says you did it, and you can rub this on you as the uh, antidote. And I said, I don't, I want to be a werewolf, honey. So here you can, you can have the antidote. So she rubbed it on herself. I was like, I wanna, I wanna be a murderer of the night. So that's what I wanted to do. Overall, the game was fine. It was fun for me and my wife. Um, there was nine, nine problems, pretty much nine puzzles. It's more puzzles than like the, what they have in like um, those other ones that we've done. But the skill cap on some of those other ones, I found myself using a lot of the hints. I never used a hint in this, not once. Um, they do a few little things to make it kind of fun and interesting that kind of like build the uh, whole like mystique of the box and stuff. Like there's like a larva thing, and when you pull it, when you open it up, it, it, there's, it's like something is inside of it that's spun with like a rubber band so like when you start to open it if it looks like a there's a bug inside of it so like if you're not prepared for it it can make you shit your pants basically uh but it was but i, I just kind of like looked at it slightly and kind of messed it up a little bit so it, it didn't really get me but i thought it was a cool little thing um but yeah it's overall i enjoy the game and i like i just like doing that type of stuff with my wife like those little like group work type of things um and it's all very hands-on it reminds me of something we have in our actual school. Uh, my no, my media specialist at our school for the media center has bought a whole bunch of uh, escape room boxes for his uh, for his uh, like media center, where you can like integrate uh, education with it. Whether it be like you know, some teachers can have like passages from certain uh, books or readings that they have. Or you can even have math problems start doing them too. So like it's very similar to that, uh, and I, I really really enjoy that type of stuff. And I, I think last, last la the the last few couple days of last year, me and one of the other teachers uh, we were bored because we had no kids showing up to school because it was the last couple days. So we went over to the media center and had him set one up for us, like a, a top level difficulty one, and we did that too. So like I just like doing this type of stuff. I think it's fun. Mm -hmm. I always like puzzles and brain teasers. The only ones I don't like is my brother really likes the, like the Jeremy has a collection of those like little Chashki brain teasers. You know what I'm talking about? Like they're, they're kind of handheld. Jeremy has a collection of like 20 of them. Like that's his favorite thing. Like that's his little, his little hobby he likes to do. And he'll give them to me. He goes, here, try these and I'll do it. And I'll just sit there just angry. Cause I just want to break it. But then they're also like made out of steel usually. I'm just like, this is stupid, it's never meant to work, it's dumb. But I like these types of things, little puzzle stuff. So, as Escape Room in a Box, uh, Werewolf Experiment, 
It's by Mattel. You can find I we bought it in a Target. Um, I was going through Target. I was like, okay, what can we play tonight? Because I want I want to play a game. I've I went, we went to the comic book store. I was like, eh, I'm not in the mood for a comic. I, I can watch Doom Patrol, but nobody cares right now. Um, <laughs> I've heard it's good. It's though. supposed to be good, but I'll, I'll wait good. a couple more weeks before I talk about it again. So I'm like, I want to play a game. So I'm looking at all the stuff. I'm like, Escape in a Box, perfect. I like this type of stuff. My wife likes it. That's what we did. So I just like the outside of the box thinking with this stuff. It's really interesting how they kind of do some of these little tricks, and it's fun. And um I, I think I got used to it with those other things we did, but I really do like these types of games. I think they're they're good little brain teasers. So, so yeah, there's our little uh, board game corner, I guess. All right, so board game heavy opening uh, this episode. Uh, and speaking of werewolves, uh, Justin, let's go. Uh, let's go talk about our shared challenge for the week. And now it's time for the gentleman's challenge. So the Gentleman's Challenge is a segment we do here on the Lollygaggers podcast where Justin and I like to give each other a homework assignment. This homework assignment sometimes is watching a movie or a TV show, maybe playing a game uh, or uh, reading a comic. And then to ensure that we actually completed that homework assignment, we come back on the next episode and we quiz each other about it. Now, we should warn you that everything that we talk about in the Gentleman's Challenge is very spoiler heavy. Uh, We don't really pull any punches. So if there is something about today's topics that you do not want to be spoiled about, you're best to kind of go experience them yourselves before you actually listen to this segment. And on that note, Justin, we had a first, uh, it it was sort of, it was a very delightful moment where we both realized that we were going to assign each other the same homework assignment, which was The Order on Netflix. Uh, so I feel this is going to be so it's sort of like a breakdown, what we're kind of doing and kind of mixing in some quiz questions. So let me, yeah. So let me give a quick rundown of the order. Uh, so the order is on Netflix. It's their newest drama series just came out about two weeks ago. It's created by Dennis Heaton and the show follows Jack Morton, who's played by, and I wonder, I love this guy's name, Jake Manley. His name is Jake Manley. Anyway. The show follows Jack Morton, uh, that's the character's name, as he navigates his first year of college at the prestigious Belgrave University. Uh, Now, the unique thing is that this university is home to some relatively supernatural drama, and Jack also has an ulterior motive for attending this university. So Jack and his grandfather, who's played by uh, Max Hedrum, uh, also known as the ageless Matt Frewer, uh, they have been secretly tracking the man that they feel is responsible for the Jack, for the death of Jack's mom and therefore the grandfather's daughter. Uh, and that man, however, ha- happens to be Jack's father somehow and uh, also uh, is the uh, grand magus of an occult society of witches and various other warlocks and stuff whose training grounds and recruitment office seem to be a fraternity-ish on Belgrave's campus. Uh, and it's called the Hermetic Order of the Blue Rose that invites uh, pledges by giving them a very obvious blue rose and then magically having like invitations appear in their pocket. It's very, uh, very fascinating. Now, Jack and his grandfather know nothing about the whole magic thing, but they do know about the Hermetic Order, but for, and for reasons we don't entirely know, fault them somewhat with the death of the mother. Again, still don't really know that, at least in the first four episodes that Justin and I watch. Now, Jack quickly learns that magic is real as he works through the pledge process. And if witches and magic weren't enough, uh, he also learns that there are werewolves on this campus. Werewolves in the form of yet another secret society that goes by the name the Knights of St. Christopher. Uh, And they see it as their noble duty to root out magicians and witches and all sorts of bad magic. So... Because Jack is apparently the center of the universe in this television show, he is unexpectedly recruited and drafted, slash drafted, I should say, uh, by the werewolves when the spirit of the strongest, most revered werewolves uh, chooses Jack to be his host. There's kind of an interesting way in which werewolves work in this particular show. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, all of this supernatural horror stuff is weaved together with basic college life. Uh, So Jack has something of a love life slash love interest. He pursues Alyssa Drake who is a sophomore and uh, ultimately becomes his magic tutor, also a very uh, bad tour guide uh, for the campus. Uh, There's also beer pong because, you know, that's a thing. Uh, There are English tests, there's there's ethics papers, and there's what I think, honestly, is the worst campus bar of all time, uh, and et cetera, et cetera. Now, 
in a strange twist of fate, Justin and I both assigned the show for homework uh, the first four episodes, so we're going to do this together. Uh, Justin, since I just did the summary, why don't you just kind of share your thoughts? What, 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 what are you thinking of the order so far? This show is so close to being good, it pisses me off. Because it could be good. There's so many moments that I'm like, okay, okay, and then just... Why do you want it to be good, Justin, when it's already great? It's an awful show. I don't know who writes this thing, but they're not a kid at all. It's it's so bad. Like, there's one line that stuck out in particular where the professor was talking to him and said, make sure you uh, give me good marks on ratemyprof.com. Like, who says that? Yeah. Who says that? There isn't there isn't a professor who gives a shit about rate my professor. No, no. Like I it's am a professor. Rate my prof. No one gives who a says shit. prof? Like I understand why they did that because they probably weren't like referring to like the specific thing, but like honestly, a professor that gives a crap, like there's no professors don't give a crap. Are you kidding me? No one cares about that kind of there's stuff. There's so many moments that can be good. Or interesting. The premise alone, I think, is okay. All right. The idea of instead of a fraternity being a fraternity, it's a fraternity of magic. All right. I, I'll go with that. And like your your magic cops are the werewolves. All right. I, I can go with that too. All right. And, and they're creating this who have no problem murdering. People, yeah, because that's by the way. they're totally well, cool. With you know, them. and eating these cops. Anyways, so uh, you know, <laughs> uh. What was I? I'm sorry. Anyway, so like, uh, <laughs> I got myself all sidetracked. What what I what I like about the show is like the overall premise is interesting. It it reminds me a lot of like a supernatural, but it's it's so much worse written than a supernatural. It's it's a. By the way, the the head writer's name is Shelley Erickson. So right now you're just trashing Shelley. Okay, Erickson. well she, she does a terrible job writing how kids talk, and like it's just. Certain things make no sense. Like they're they're trying to do things where it's like, okay, this is what we do in college, right? Beer pong. It's college, so everything's beer pong. It's just it's so disconnected from like reality, and and it's just one of the, one of the notes I wrote down was uh, unnecessary f bombs. They're just throwing f bombs all the time, and they're not. This would be fine as a PG thirteen. I'm okay with like shit. But all the f bombs they throw are so unnecessary and stupid. So like, who is this for? Really, really, I didn't actually get that at all. I just felt that it was that, like that too was, much. I guns. have many complaints, but that wasn't one of them. Uh, what else was there? When before they explained it in the third episode, my one of my questions was, how come nobody cares that kids are just dying all over this campus and uh, the police haven't been called or nothing? Hey, hey, there's that one cop, and then they do the magical spell that changes people's memories. Sure, right? yeah, that makes sense. Um, the next question is, no one bullies guys like that in college anymore. No one's just like, what's up, townie? Get out of here, loser. Like, who, who talks like that? Who, who's just a, a dick to be a dick like that anymore? This isn't 1980s. This isn't, uh, we're not on a, the ski slopes in, in, in Aspen and, uh, it's Stan Darsh. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're, we're challenging you because for the love of your woman. Okay. So like, I do think bullying still exists, but I don't necessarily. Not in that form. It, like, I yeah, I mean I'm on a college campus, it's my job, I'm there every day, and I don't really see that kind of bullying. Like there is bullying, but it's not necessarily as overt. But one of the things I would say that always sort of frustrates me is that super cliche of I am sort of with this girl and so so as to establish my dominance, I'm going to pick on this other guy and like push him yeah. around. I just like where where is that like are we still doing that? Like are we still making that a freaking cliche? It's like, like it's like Encino man. In it's 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 just ridiculous these 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 concepts. I know I know that men like us. I know that, you know, we have problems. But like I'd like to think that we have matured uh, beyond that cliche at a certain point. Like there's certain clichés in television and movies that really drive me nuts. That's one of them. Like can we stop with that? So, it's so unrealistic. It, it's just not how things are how people talk anymore, how people interact anymore and just to kind of like be a dick to someone because of they showed up. They don't even know who this guy is. You know, like the lower, I can understand like the the magistrate or the up, upper level people know who he is. But like these lower pe- level kids have no idea who this guy is, and they're just an asshole to him just because. It just makes no sense. Like there's there's no there's no motivation as to why they had to be a jerk other than the fact that he's a guy that has pretty nice hair. You know, 
Um, on top of that, like sometimes, sometimes the kid says stuff, the main character says stuff that just doesn't make any sense that a kid would say that or or would happen. The the grandfather they have not explained anything about how the grandfather is okay with the idea of werewolves and magic so easily. Like nothing's been explained at all. We're four episodes in and they have not pulled back the curtain yet <laughs> at all as to why grandpa is okay with a magic society yeah. and his son murdering people and stuff like that. Like it was gra- grandson and his grandson. I just don't yeah, get, get that. You. Like there's certain it, it's it's on the cusp. There's 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 such a huge like such a huge leap of faith you have to take. I would say one of the things, I mean, since we're talking about since we're talking about things that, that frustrate us a little bit um, and, and building a little bit off of the notion of how some of these characters act, like I'm okay with characters being like immature because certainly they are. I'm, like I said, I'm on a campus every day with this age of age group and like I see it, et cetera. But the thing that I think that drove me nuts is this is a, okay, so the name of the society is the Hermetic Order of the Blue Rose, which is this highly prized secretive society that only wants the best of the best. So who do they recruit? They recruit the dumbest, most shallow, most ridiculous people who are immature and can't handle crap. Like that's who is in like the recruitment, uh, the recruitment class with Jack. Like, are you kidding me? There wasn't. There was like one other decent person in that whole whole recruitment yeah, class. Yeah, Like, like only simple. three. Yeah, and only three people are like allowed to make it, which is I, it's super arbitrary, but whatever. And of those three people, two of them are incredibly immature, incredibly shallow, incredibly self-centered. And that's fine because I think people can be that. But my question is, why is this all-knowing, all-powerful, wonderful, like, order that wants, like, people to be, keep secrets, that wants people to, to use magic responsibly? Why the hell are you choosing these people? It makes no sense it makes absolutely no sense it's not at all something i was watching the whole thing i'm like seriously these are the two people that they ended up with like are you kidding are we surprised then that they do all the awful things that they do it's just i don't know it really frustrated me and it was just the the absence of logic to the order itself was just really frustrating i think the best word for me to describe this tv show is frustration because it it, it could be something very fun and and exciting and, and interesting but boy, do they just every time they do something, they barely miss the mark. Like Clay, when Clay's like fighting him and he's killing him, it's like, all right, man. Clay is. We should explain who Clay is. Clay is the is Jack's uh, Jack's dorm roommate, who turns out to be a Clay Golem, which is really clever. And uh, yeah, so he's fighting. So at a certain point as Jack uncovers the fact that Clay is a golem that's been sent to kind of kill people on campus. Continue, Justin. It, he, so he goes to fight him, and then as, because he won't, since Jack won't die, he's like, all right, now you're just kind of being a dick. Like, it's it's almost funny. It's almost funny. But it's, it's just mistimed a little bit. Everything just seems wrong. It's like this was made by, it's like, it, it's almost like, the, the best way I can describe it is like, this TV show is written by an Eastern European who thinks that this is what America's like. You know what I mean? Best way I can I think it. it's Canadian produced, isn't it? Isn't it Canadian? I don't know, but holy moly, it's just so almost there. That's the most frustrating thing about the show is that it could be good, but it's just so close, and it ends up being garbage. That's the that's what makes me. There so are upset. some things I do I do like about it. One of the things I mentioned during the summary is like the werewolf stuff. I really like their take on how werewolves work. Now, normally when we talk about werewolves, the most cliche thing, and Justin actually described it when he was talking about the board game in the opening segment, and that's like usually it's some sort of disease, right? It's lycanthropy. It's contracted via a bite or something like that, and now that's exactly how it works. It's just sort of some biological disease or curse within you that it's forcing this transformation. Now, in the order, it's actually kind of interesting. There, there are werewolf skins, and they're they're like kind of locked away in these little boxes in the basement of their rundown uh, like fraternity house. And what happens is these spirits they have physical manifestations as what would basically be like a throw rug or something like that, and they choose who they want to be their their kind of avatar. And so. That's exactly what happens. Uh, I think it's Silvermane or Silverback is the is the main is sort of the main character's um, werewolf who chooses him like through happenstance. Basically, he gets kind of herded into the basement, and then without having a choice, this 
this he's attacked by a blanket with a wolf head who wraps himself around him and now he becomes it. so i really find that kind of an interesting iteration on the notion of werewolf is taking sort of the stereotypical werewolf concept and, and evolving it in an interesting way contrast that with the way in which some of our other modern kind of werewolf vampire witches stuff has done it and i feel like this is really good when i look at something like twilight for instance and their horrible iteration of, of vampires i feel like this is a really good way really interesting way of doing it i would like more about how that spirited works now the problem however is i find the werewolf society the knights of the saint christopher all of those characters are awful like like there are three characters that actually serve as the knights of the saint of saint christopher which first of all is horribly named uh, it's so uh, it's so it's got an over an over an overly high sense of importance to the name and it it's got three other characters one of whom i think Hamish is a like a like an assistant or associate professor there because he's been there for like eight years or something like that. That's how he's described in the cast. Uh, but then there's two other characters, one of whom just happens to be Jack's RA, uh, who also is a werewolf. Uh, and then another who I can't remember her name specifically because she I think it's I think it's Lilith. I think it's I think that's the character's name. That might be it. Uh, and she's also one of their. They're just terrible. They're terrible. And they, they're the and ones they have who do the no beer pong idea, stuff, to make their decisions. They have no idea, like the history of their past. Like he he None spends whatsoever. he spends ten minutes in the dungeon underneath their place, and he learns all about their past. And they have no idea. He's already more more intelligent than them when it comes. It's to the just history it's so frustrating how, yeah. how terribly written this is. It's just, you so. mentioned that this was this reminded you of Supernatural. For me, it reminded it reminded me of The Magicians. I'm not sure if you've ever watched The Magicians on Sci-Fi, um, but it's based off Lev Grossman's novel series. Uh, and it's on sci-fi. It's airing right now. I think it's season four, maybe season three right now. I can't remember what number they're on. Uh, but it's on sci-fi. It's on Wednesdays. And honestly, I love The Magicians. It's hilarious. It's 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 graduate student into, into your 20s. I think they shifted the age because I think during the actual books, they were college students. But then they kind of raised the age a little bit. Um, and I feel like there's a tone that's very similar in the sense that we have all this crazy supernatural stuff going on, but we're also trying to be clever and quippy about it all. Like we have like really shallow millennial characters. And then I don't think all millennials are shallow because sort of, I don't know, that that's not important right now. But like the idea is there's a lot of shallowness to them. But at the same time, like there's purpose and reason for their shallowness. And there's a great untapped resource. Like they're very, they're very savvy about the world. They're very savvy about pop culture. And there's a lot of uh, commentary that's being done on the very, on, on the very stereotypes that we actually explore in, in fiction, right? In, in storytelling. Now, the only problem is, is that even though I think the tone's the same, I just feel like this is this is a very like like very much like Justin's saying. I feel like this is a this is just a a, a bad a bad version of it, right? I feel like it's trying to be like the magicians. It's trying to be clever and quippy and relevant and meaningful and have deep characters. But ultimately you have very shallow characters and you have characters that really don't have any purpose or depth. You don't really have a very good understanding of the lore and the world that you're building. A lot of the logic about how certain things are behaving, why your order works this way, why characters are making certain decisions. None of that has any logic to it. It's all inconsistent. It's all kind of hand waved to a certain degree where it becomes incredibly frustrating. I don't really believe believe that this is a college campus for a variety of reasons uh and yeah it's like and, and i agree with you it's like it's close like it's close to being that's the worst good. part about it it's because it's so close it's so close it, it just that's what pisses me off about the show not like the show i think the actors are fine and whatever and and the i disagree i don't think all the actors like, are fine i think some of them are very bad it's just so close it makes me mad <laughs> that's the first time this has ever happened to me yeah, I mean, are you going to watch the rest of it? Like, there's, I think there's only, what, eight episodes? Even though we're uh, already no, halfway through it, Sorry. I do not want to. It just... I'm going to watch the rest of it. I, I'm going to give it a first season. I'm going to give it a first season. Like, it's got, it's gotten to the point where it's interesting enough where I feel like I'll watch the first season. And then at that point, like, ne you know, Netflix will decide if they want to do a second season or not. So it's always possible things can mature, things can get better. And honestly, if some of the complaints we have are that certain actions and behaviors and, and things don't really make sense. Like why the, why the, why pops is so quick to believe stuff. What the hell happened to the mother? Like, I understand that that's there, but we really don't know anything about why Four hours. or how Four she hours died. And yeah. not one sentence of, of, uh, uh of information has been given to the, the viewer as to why grandpa hates him so much. You know, it just doesn't make any sense. Right. Well, I mean, they think he's responsible for the death. Of sure. The that's all we know. Why we don't know anything more than that. 
Now, over the course of the first season, we might get some answers to those questions. So if those answers start coming, then we get to the point where like, okay, that's not as much of a complaint anymore. The bigger issue for me is like, are these characters and is the you know, the way in which they represent college life, the way in which they represent like how they communicate with one another, how the Hermetic Order or the Blue Rose and the Knights of St. Christopher, how they function in a logical space and how the world actually works. If those things aren't addressed, then like to me, the show kind of falters at that point, because I feel like we'll get answers eventually. And so that, to me, that's just a pacing issue. Right. But I just want to make sure that these characters get better because I don't think they're particularly good. Like some of them are terrible. Like Jack is OK, but I also feel like Jack is he's just overly capable. Right. And I and he's super he's the classic, you know, male white protagonist. Everything revolves around him like the whole damn thing revolves around him. He's recruited not to just one, but two highly secretive, highly suspicious and a very selective uh secret societies like he's recruited to both of them like are you kidding like come on and he just so happens to be suave enough to kind of potentially win the heart of like the one you know actually one of like two female characters we have and like he's just always mr capable to the point where i, I find him incredibly unlikable now i contrast this again with the magicians now the magician's main character quentin is the complete inverse of that quentin's character is kind of he's got issues, right? He's got social anxiety. He's got a lot of inferiority complexes going on. Um, he he actually does in some way, I think, invert the notion of this classic hero type. And it's he's a flawed character that over the course of the actual series, finds his place, finds his footing, finds his voice, but ultimately becomes the, the show becomes more of uh, kind of a group. It's a group cast. Like it's, it's the whole entire cast that's that's important. It's not just the singular character. Whereas I don't think that's what the order is going for. And I'm um, I'm sorry, but like he's an 18 year old kid, and like I just the fact that the like, can we move away from this notion that the that the world has to revolve around this one singular character? Like that frustrates me as well because I don't think he's a good enough. I don't think his acting has particularly been great. I'm not sure if the lines that he's been giving in the story that he's been told have been all there. It's very patchy at times it's very good and at times it's very flawed so if this becomes if there's better supporting cast which i don't think there is right now i think the supporting cast is actually quite poor because the ra character who is also strangely enough in the magicians and he plays relatively the same role he's okay but the rest of the werewolves are terrible the other two werewolves, hamish and uh, and lilith they're both terrible pops is i mean it's max headroom so i love him but at the same time he's underdeveloped like all the 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 rivals that he had inside the order whose names I can't even remember right now they're awful you know so there's I don't think the characters are great and I think they need a lot of a lot of development still um and again it's early so maybe it gets better but I don't know it's hard to root for anybody right now because they're really annoying at times right really annoying so I'm going to give it to the end of the season though because I do think there's promise I do. I think there's potential for it to get better. And because of the way Netflix works, we can access this all right now. We don't have to wait week to week. If this was a show that was only giving me one episode per week, I would have dropped after the second episode. I'm like, this isn't worth me waiting an extra week. But if I can burn through it relatively fast in an afternoon or two over a weekend, like it's not as to me, it's different. It's just like the way in which you consume the content is different. So because it's Netflix, I'm going to give it a couple more episodes to see sort of where it goes. All right, Justin. Are we ready to do the quizzes? Is is quizzes? Yeah, quizzes? yeah, yeah, yeah. We ready. So you're first because you're. What do we want to do? We just you're the first. We want, two. We want to just. What, what, why don't we alternate? I'll questions? do that. We can do it. You ask one, then I ask one. So why don't you go ahead and ask me your first question? All right. What do you got? So I want you to name three of the five people named, who have been rumored to be in the order. So so they say six. There were like six names given about like how powerful it can be. So there's okay. there's three good, three bad. So name three. Michelle Obama was one. That was one. That was one. Um, I want to say Oprah. There you go. And then, hmm, who is the third? Hmm, I want to say one of them's got to be bad too, right? There's got to be a bad guy in there somewhere. Hmm, 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 hmm. It's a good question, actually. I vaguely remember this. Michelle Obama and Oprah definitely. Um, I'm just gonna throw out Hitler. Uh, just because this seems like the show that would make a Hitler joke, because I don't, I don't remember a third. So there you Very go. close. It was uh, Mussolini was the one that they mentioned. Ah, I knew it was one of those World War II people. So the God. six that they said okay. was Oprah, Michelle, Michelle Obama, and uh, Warren Buffett, and then they said Mussolini, 
George Bush and Oprah, saying that Oprah is both good and evil. So uh, right. there was really six they named, okay. but one of them was a repeat. All right, so that's that's like two thirds. Like a two-thirds. I'll give you, I'll give you right. uh, sixty-six or point six six. All right, so Perfect. my Perfect. turn. Okay, Justin, we have already talked about how the depiction of young people in college life is very often inaccurate in this show. I would like you to please describe or identify what is the most inaccurate asinine depiction of college life that is currently depicted in the show and there is a correct answer uh is it that a professor would talk to his students during a lecture oh that's i'm sorry that's incorrect the most inaccurate asinine description is that a on-campus or just off-campus bar never cards (laughs) never asks people not once, man. I ran. I managed a freaking bar on campus when I was in college, and we we had to like every single time. I'm sure people had fake IDs. Sure, that happens from time to time. But like, how easy it is for everyone to get beer is like it's that, that's ridiculous. No, 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 no. Absolutely terrible, awful. I don't like. it. I would also so, argue that my answer. answer is also somewhat correct because I think in the uh, five years I spent in college, let's be honest, five and a half close to six years I spent in college. Uh, I don't think a single professor ever like talked to me in my freshman classes. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. Classes. You were in a terrible school. You were in a terrible school because I do it all the time. I am a college professor and I do teach. Like, and who takes ethics level. in their freshman year? I don't make no sense. I took philosophy. So, all right. I don't think we had an ethics course, but we did have philosophy. So yeah. All right. So next question. Uh, yeah. What is more okay. selfish than self-preservation? What is more selfish than self-preservation? This was during the ethics class, one of the first ethics lectures. Oh, um, it's sort of drawing attention to yourself or making yourself the center of attention. Very good, being the center of attention. So there you go. There's a point for you, buddy. Okay, okay. Just sort of in line with my previous question. Sort of. There. What is the worst line in moment... In the first four episodes, and again, there is a correct answer to this question. What is the worst line slash moment of the first four episodes of the The one that really stood out to me was when uh, the father, like the head magistrate, uh, was talking to the girl. And, like, he burns his hand to do something. I forget what it was. Like, something happens where he burns his hand and it it uh, it was healed. And she goes, oh, my God, it's healed. He goes, cool, huh? That really stuck out that's to me. That's pretty bad. Awful. I'm like, that's some of the worst writing I've ever. Like, what? That's pretty bad. I'm going to give you 0.25 for that. Right, okay, that's not okay. the correct okay. answer. But I'm going to give you 0.25 because that is pretty bad. Uh, and you're talking about the Grand Magus speaking to Alyssa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was doing, like, a transmutation thing where he was turning something into, like, kind of a gold coin. And he burned his hand in front of, like, the whole people. And then he healed it. And, yeah. Okay. So the worst moment was when Jack actually in the middle of campus kisses Elise, Alyssa like out of nowhere and she gets super flush, flustered. This is a, a woman character who has been very, uh, very, she's very strong minded. She's really, I actually think she's one of the better characters. She gets all flustered and she says, quote, right in the middle of campus, right to him, your lips are so soft. So yeah, no, that was so bad. Like I, I threw up a little bit in my mouth. Like I was like, Ugh, it was awful. All right. Absolutely All right. awful. Your next question. What does the order members say instead of silver bullets? So when they're talking about like uh, uh, werewolves and the fact that they might be on campus and the the woman's talking about they needed to start investigating it and they uh, say, they're about to say silver bullets and she says, if you say silver bullets, I'm going to murder you or something like that. So one of them says something else and this word has a very special meaning to you and me. So what word did he say instead of silver bullets? Oh my God. Was it? Oh geez. I do. I totally remember this. Cause that dude who plays that character is actually in deadly class. He plays the Russian guy in deadly class and he's hilarious. Oh my god, was it, I want to say, it was like silver beavers? Jeffrey, it was silver bullfrog. Bullfrog. Silver bullfrog, that's what it was. That's, oh, that stuck out bullfrog. to me, so I'm like, I how remember. can I not use that as one of our questions? Oh, that's a bullfrog. great question, that's a great question. I, to- I totally should remember that. Totally silver bullfrogs. Uh, just to explain to the crowd, when we used to be on like Vent or TeamSpeak in the, in the old days, when we were like raiding for World of Warcraft or something like that, and... 
somebody disconnected or like they sound like they're disconnected, we would constantly yell like bullfrog, say bullfrog, bullfrog? just to sort of do like a call. Bullfrog. Response. Yeah. Bullfrog. 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 Oh God. How did I? Oh, I'm... that's terrible. That's terrible. Okay. Your third question. What is written on Jack's mother's tombstone? Oh, I don't know that at all. Anna's gets blowed up. I don't remember. We, we see it multiple times. I know that one. Uh, I don't remember. It's... I'm sorry. It says, Chloe Morton, beloved daughter and mother, someday will understand. And so my question was, I wonder what it is uh, we're going to understand. I, I'm just kind of curious. Her, her yeah. love for Yu-Gi-Oh so cards, go. probably. I think that's what it is. <laughs> that's true. Imagine the gathering, I get strange. Pokemon, I understand. But Yu-Gi-Oh, no one, no one gets what's going on there. So I'll, I'll take that one on the chin. I'll, I didn't know that one at all. Okay, so next question for you. Yeah, it happens. There's a lot. We had a lot of, we have four episodes to pull from. It was something like that, so it's hard. All right, so... How do they rationalize uh, how the spoiled neophyte, you know, the one that's like a giant uh, bitch, how did, how did they rationalize that? How, why was she walking so fast? Remember, she leaves the party because a guy throws up. And then somehow it goes from light to, it goes from day to night within seconds somehow. And she's walking in the, she's walking in the forest trying to get somewhere before the golem attacks her. And they say, man, she got out of here fast. How did she walk so fast? What was the reason as to why they think she was walking so fast? I remember the scene, and I remember thinking, wow, it got dark fast. Uh, it's the first thing I thought. I'm I like, not, what? what happened? I know. I totally know what scene you're talking about. I have no idea. I have no idea. I did find it funny that this was at a point in which there already been murders, and she decides to walk all by herself through a forest. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Just no, it's awesome. Good thinking. Makes beautiful sense the rationalization uh, I, I don't remember was that the bars are open that was a rationalization that uh because oh. she's oh, apparently yeah. a bar yeah. skank and she's gonna go to the bars i guess is what it is and apparently uh belgrave university they don't actually card people so she's good uh, she can get right in no problem okay uh question number four where and how did jack and pops learn about werewolves uh were they reading in the library or something like that no no it was it was in their garage and they're reading it from a book. That's all I remember. I don't know what the book was, though. So it was in their garage. That is incorrect. Uh, they were at home, certainly. But Pops was online via a ridiculously old monitor. Like one of those big old CRT Packard types Bell. with like the reflective. Oh, yeah. It's terrible. And he was specifically looking on the website wolfpedia.net. Mm, yeah. Justin, did you find it strange that they had a freaking Google werewolf? Well, yeah, like, they had to actually, like, when, when, like, why are they like, oh, let's, I wonder what this thing was. Like, let's look it up. Oh, it says it's a werewolf. So oh, you're yeah, telling me it's, it's a like, human-sized wolf, um, bipedal, and it, it, it's attacking people. Uh, let's go to, hey, let's go to Wolfopedia. What, 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 what it could be? Oh, the, it, the internet says it's a werewolf. I, I oh, think it's pronounced. Oh, I know what a werewolf it's pronounced is. Werewolf. Uh, we, uh, werewolf. Hey, hey, hey! We're werewolves, not swearwolves. <laughs> much again, a much better depiction of werewolves uh, than this, in this <laughs> film, this TV show. So that is incorrect. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. Justin. Okay, incorrect. Okay. Last question: Is Clay funny? Because I don't know. I I can tell. Because he kind of was, yeah. Much like, much like the rest of the show, he kind of is, and almost is, ve- almost is a fantastic character. Yeah, but it's just not quite clicking. You know, it's super close. There are moments when he's very, very funny. Timing's just off. Um, I really like the part where his where his uh, his disembodied head tried to talk really fast. That uh, was funny. Like, it was like, hey man, sorry about yeah. before. And like he was trying. Yeah, to- it's like sorry about before. So that was pretty funny. Uh, so it's a mixed bag. I would say it needs some fine tuning. Uh, but currently, overall, I would say no, but with small, small moments where he is very funny. I'll give that one to you because that's exactly how I felt. I'm like, uh, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah. What? What kind of noises are you making? I'm like, oh, right. oh, oh, oh. Okay, Justin, the final question I have for you is perhaps my favorite question, and it's the question that's most directly related to what we do for our profession. And so at a certain point uh, in this particular show, uh, the ethics professor and the English professor uh, meet up uh, outside of a, a classroom, and Jack is following the ethics professor, giving him excuses for why he doesn't have his paper. And when that happens... Both of the professors take out a loose leaf piece of paper with a student excuse bingo chart. Okay, so what are some of the reasons that are listed 
on the student excuse bingo. I didn't pay that bingo. close attention. Um, oh, I'm going man, to, let me, you missed let me it. This, guess was, this was gold. Let me guess some. Uh, dog ate my homework. Go for dog it. ate it. Is that one of them? Uh, uh, sort of. Okay, keep going. Uh, the one was a uh, r- roommate died. That was one of them. Right, right. Um, uh, I can't. I, that's all I can think of. Uh, that's okay. Because like the, a follow up question was also going to be, what have you actually heard in real life? Which of these choices did you actually hear in real life? So let me go through some of the ones that you can actually see. My locker jammed. Okay. Um, okay. My room is haunted. <laughs> One of my favorites was you didn't remind me about it, which I think is so <laughs> Yeah, that's good. That's uh, good. Which is very accurate. I'm in love. <laughs> my mother took it to be framed. It's against my religion. I left it on the bus. My cat wanted to cuddle. My roommate died today. My backpack was stolen. And this is also a really, really good one. I was at a rally for higher teacher pay. <laughs> uh, my, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> my roommate used it as toilet paper. And police needed it for evidence. There's others, but I couldn't quite see them all. But those are the ones I saw. So I was, so you didn't really get many of them. You only got like one ish. Not even actually. You really only got the one about the roommate dying. Um, and so then my other follow up question uh, to this one is: So why do they both have the exact same bingo grid sheet with the exact same layout? Do they, the two of these professors and the people who actually write the show, understand how bingo works? And that the layout is supposed to be different, and it's otherwise everyone would just get bingo at the same time. What the hell's wrong? What the? I think the only thing that explains it is if administration were to see that happen, they'd probably be fired. So it was probably a hastily made thing and copied and sent to each other, and not. Uh... They wouldn't get fired for that. They're, they're, that's not a fire. Oh no, that's it's it's not great. It's not great. There's that. literally there's there's what is wrong with that? I don't know. When there's I saw that, I was nothing like, that's wrong not... with that. That's not professional. I don't know. That is not a fireable offense. I don't know. Fire remotely fireable. Jeffrey, do you have a bingo I'm sheet? Kidding. Is that what you're trying to tell me right now? No. No, we don't. We have done uh, March Madness before. Oh. Uh, March Madness thing. We have done horse racing before. Uh, and then, I don't know. We're doing something new next week. It's all for like scholarship uh, scholarship fundraising. So it's got good reasons behind it. But it's pretty, it's, it's pretty funny. So anyway, uh, Justin, looking at this... Um, I think you got point two five. You got, got <laughs> point six six plus one, and then yeah, so you got two point six. That's what we'll say. Two point six. Okay, you you got point two five. All right, that's good. No, that's good. Uh, you know, okay. So this was very important because this was a head to head. This was straight up head to head. Yeah, and, and clearly we we play by golf rules. Uh, all gators podcast. So. Uh, yeah, we do match play, so uh, positive is better. I was thinking more skins. Nope, I don't sorry. Know well, skins, skins, I would still I win, know, actually, because skins know, also is positive. I don't know anything about golf. You're, you're thinking of basic metal play, which would be uh, going under, like lower, better. Skins is still a higher number is better. All right, so are you for new challenges? I have one that I saw on Netflix that looks actually really rad, and I'm afraid it does. it's not going to be good. Wow. Wow, um, rad! Like, let's, really? Yeah. Let's be... I don't think you're cool enough to say I that. I am to cool, make that and I can work. say it all I, I don't want. Think so. so this looks I real don't think you rad. Can pull off rad. Uh, so it's called Love, Death, and Robots. Uh, it's somewhat new on Netflix, and I saw the preview for it, and it looks really cool. So I hope it's good. Um, question mark? Huh? Isn't isn't this the? This is Tim Miller, right? I think yeah, it, it's, it, it, it's an anthology series. This is uh, what's it called? I think this is um, this is David Fincher and Tim Miller. It looks really correctly. interesting at the very least. Um, so Love, Death, and Robots. It's like a, okay. a whole bunch of different mediums. I think it's like different. It's like different types of animation and stuff. So that's yours. What you got for me? Well, Justin, you know what your challenge is. Uh, we've uh, talked about it for yeah. a while. Here we go. This was the this was the week. I know you have something uh, Monday through Wednesday, but you still have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and I'll Sunday have to, crank it out. to complete to complete Resident Evil Two, the remake that you now have access to because we've done Friends and Family on Steam. So there you go. 
All right, uh, uh, and on that note, let's go ahead and end this episode. If you would be so kind, if you're a listener and you like what we're hearing, if you want to hop onto iTunes, leave us a little uh, review, maybe give us a little rating. Uh, if you don't use iTunes, maybe you should use it anyway. Uh, but if not, go on whatever system or place or location where you're actually getting our podcast uh, and give us, a, give us a thumbs up or a star or whatever system that they use. Uh, if you want to catch us online, you can catch me on Twitter at LollyGaggerCo. Justin's at JD Buys. Uh, Justin's also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Jehufo. We also have a website, uh, lollygaggerco.com. If you have any ideas for what we can start challenging each other with, feel free to contact us on any one of those platforms. Maybe give us an idea what Justin can actually challenge me with, what I can challenge Justin with, anything like that. We would love to get some suggestions. Uh, on that note, Justin, I would like you uh, to go ahead and provide us with your basic ethos with life. Since we talked a lot about ethics what is your philosophy on life? Uh, so I feel in order to be a, a great man, it's all about getting bitches and making money. You know what I mean? So if you can do that. Wow, man. That's what you got to live your life by. That was terrible. Get bitch. That was honest. Wow. Get bitches. That was the get most. Get bitches make money. This is the worst thing you've ever said in this podcast. Get bitches make money. I'm sorry, everybody. Good night.